Hi there, mathematicians. Let's get started with section 1.2, measuring and constructing segments. Our objectives are that legends will be able to use the ruler postulate, use the segment addition postulate, which I abbreviate to SAP or SAP, and derive the distance formula from the Pythagorean theorem. All right, in geometry, a rule that is accepted without proof is called a postulate, or in other words, an axiom. Keywords here is without proof. So I don't need to prove the statement's postulates true. They're accepted as true, in other words, without proof. A rule that can be proved is called a theorem, as you will see later. All right, our first key point for today's lesson is our ruler postulate. Points on a line can be matched one-to-one -one with the real numbers. And the real numbers that correspond to a point is the coordinate of the point. So to get an understanding of these two sentences, let's take a look at this image. Here we have point A on this line and point B collinear with A. Well, right now I don't know their location, so I'll assign this location with the value of x, and it's the first x, so it has a 1. And then I'll assign the location of point B as the second x, also unknown. So we have x1 and x2. So to get the distance between points A and B, written AB, no symbol above, we take the absolute value of the difference of the coordinates of A and B. So all this postulate is saying is that if I want to find the distance between A and B, I can simply subtract the two coordinate values associated with the two points. And since distance is always positive, that's why you're taking the absolute value. All right, so you take the absolute value of the difference of the coordinates of A and B or whatever the points are named. It doesn't have to be A or B. All right, let's take a look at example one. Find the length of BE using the ruler postulate. All right, so let's start by assigning the variables x1 and x2 to the locations for B and E. And then we know to get the distance, it's got to be positive, so we want the absolute value of x2's location minus x1's location. So by substitution, I can say 5 minus negative 1. Simplify inside your grouping symbols, so 5 plus 1. resulting in 6, so the distance between B and E is equal to the absolute value of 6, which is 6. So the distance between B and E is 6. Alright, so you can pause the video here to formally take notes about the information we just um, looked at here. Remember that when you are saying a segment Make sure you say the segment bar as the word segment. So, so the length of, and then say segment BE is six units. All right, key point number two is our segment addition postulate, also known as or abbreviated to SAP, so SAP. We know that if B is between A and C, then length of AB plus length of BC equals AC. We can switch these two parts of the statement. So if AB plus BC equals AC, then B is between A and C. This is your segment addition postulate. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of examples using the segment addition postulate. So we're gonna find the length of DF. All right, so first we can set up an equation with our segments, the names of our segments. So using the segment addition postulate, write a statement, df equals de plus ef, and then show your substitution. So we can substitute de with 23 and ef with 35, and then combining like terms, we get 23 plus 35, which equals 58. So the length of df is 58. Let's look at sample B, so find the length of GH. 
So again, first set up your segment addition postulate statement. So FH equals FG plus GH. Then show your substitution. So this time we know the full length from F to H, which is 36. And then we know part of the full length, which is 21. What we're trying to solve for then is just part of the full segment, which is GH. So we use order of operations to undo and solve for G to H. So 15 is the length or distance from G to H. All right, let's take this up a notch with the segment addition postulate. Let's take a look at this example where it's all algebra. So we want to find, if we know that, uh, we want to find the length of L to N, and we know that point M is between points L and N on segment LN. We know that LN equals 6X, we know that LM equals 4X plus 8, and we know that the length of MN is 27. So start by setting up your equation. So LN equals LM plus MN. Then show your substitution. So 6X equals 4X plus 8 plus 27. Combine like terms, solving for x first. So we get 6x equals 4x plus 35. Subtracting 4x on both sides, resulting in 2x equals 35. Then divide both sides by 2, resulting in x equaling 17.5. Now we're going to substitute the 17.5 into 6x, because we know that the full length of ln equals 6x. So now we're going to substitute x with 17.5, work it out. So ln, the distance from L to N, is 105. All right, so let's take a look at key point number three. You can determine the distance between any two points by creating a right triangle and using the Pythagorean theorem. So let's see how it connects with our distance formula. So here we have a right triangle. So we have a horizontal segment and a vertical segment. And based on the previous information that you just wrote down using the ruler postulate, we can get length from B to now this newly created C point, and then from C to A. So we get the absolute value of the difference of the Y coordinates. Y coordinates are always vertical. X coordinates are always horizontal. So I'm getting the difference of my X coordinates and distance is always positive. So I need to get the absolute value. So to get the length from A to B, I would take this leg squared plus this leg squared and then take the square root of those two sum. So hence, or here we go, this is our distance formula. Just remember that seeing the two letters with no symbol above does mean length or distance. So now let's take a look at how it pertains to the Pythagorean theorem. So we can say that This side is our A value, and this side is our B value. So to find the hypotenuse, or in this case, the length distance from A to B, we can plug in our values, get our lengths using our ruler postulate. In other words, get our horizontal and vertical distance, therefore leading us to ultimately just using our Pythagorean theorem. So distance formula and Pythagorean theorem will get you any length or distance that goes diagonally in the coordinate grid. All right, so let's practice. So determine the length or distance from R to S. So first plot. So R is located at negative 4, 3. And then S is located at 2, negative 8. So I connected between R and S to illustrate that I'm looking for this length. So that means I could create a right triangle or I can use distance formula. All right, so I've gone ahead and sketched in my vertical distance and my horizontal distance connecting to create a right triangle. And now I can either use Pythagorean theorem or distance formula to plug in and find the distance between R and S. So I can immediately go to RT squared plus ts squared, and the square root of all of that, substitute my values, so I'm 11 squared plus 6 squared underneath the radical, and then simplify using my radicals, and then square root of 157, 
I will expect you to be able to simplify radicals, so we'll talk more about that. I know you did it at the end of your previous course, so we'll do a quick mini lesson tomorrow. And then you can type that in a calculator and get an approximate value, always round to three decimal places. So your approximate length or distance from R to S is 12.530. Symbols matter in geometry. So we have a new symbol here, two squiggly lines. So basically you take your equal sign and make it wavy. And what you say is approximately equal to. So we say the length or distance from R to S is approximately equal to 12.530. Here we would say the length distance of RS is exactly square root of 157. So this is an exact measurement. This is an approximate. I right, take a moment here to pause and read this problem and try it on your own. And then unpause the video when you've attempted it to see if you have it right. All right, so let's see how you did. Using the distance formula, you can plug in your coordinates. So here we have our x-coordinates, so the difference of our x-coordinates, 4 minus 2 is 2. The difference of our y-coordinates is negative 4. We square each of those, so we get 4 and 16. Let's add those together, we're doing order of operations here, which is 20, so square root of 20 is approximately 4.5. All right, key point number four. A construction is a geometric drawing that uses a limited set of tools, usually a compass and straight edge. If you do not currently have these tools ready to be used, pause the video here and go grab them. Once you have your tools, follow the steps below to construct a line segment that has the same length as segment AB. So as you're reading these steps, it says use a straight edge to draw a segment longer than segment AB. So if you're following the instructions of this step, this is what your picture should look like, something like this. You're just drawing, using your straight hedge, a segment that's clearly longer than the one that's given to you on your paper. Then label point C on the new segment, just as you see in this image here provided. Now you continue the rest of your steps and let's see how it goes. Bring in clarifying questions tomorrow. All right, key point number five, line segments that have the same length are called congruent segments. You can say that the length of AB is equal to the length of CD, or you can say AB is congruent to segment CD. And we know in a picture when congruence happens because of the matching tick marks, so this little red bar and this little red bar are called tick marks. And we can say with note symbols that length or distance from A to B is equal in quantity. So length is measurement of some distance to another length or distance. And then if we're talking about shape, then we say segment with our bar above AB congruent sign CD. All right, so based on this key point of congruence and equal segments, how can we determine if two segments are congruent? Like what can we do to actually determine whether two segments are congruent. So pause here, answer this question. All right, so hopefully you mentioned something about the Pythagorean theorem and or the distance formula, because both of those are options for figuring out length and distance going diagonally in a grid. All right, so let's implement this new knowledge that we have using our distance and and or Pythagorean theorem to determine whether these two given segments are congruent. So use your new knowledge and prior knowledge to determine if segment JK and segment LM are congruent. So pause the video here, and then when you're ready to check your answers, unpause the video. All right, there we go. It looks like both segments are equal to five, so we can conclude that segment JK and segment LM have the same length, therefore they are congruent. All I have to say is keep calm and study geometry. Bring clarifying questions to class tomorrow and get ready to practice. See you then.